You may have heard that OC Transpo's books aren't looking so good. There's a big hole. For Ottawa's transit agency, every month so far this year, it's been a million dollars short on projected revenue for fares. It's definitely bad news. But it's also no surprise, with the city recently releasing long-term financials that were much worse than even the mayor expected. So what's the solution? Well, the simplest answer is raising fares or reducing service, a recipe for what experts call a death spiral. To understand how to climb out, we need to know how we got in this mess, which means going back to a more optimistic time when the East-West rail line had just opened. Despite some obvious launch issues, ridership was going up. Then came the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftermath. Private companies have allowed more remote work and hybrid work arrangements at the federal government have destabilized OC Transpo's core customer, the daily commuter. Plus there's the riders who say they will never come back because of the complex issues that the LRT is still dealing with. We know that uh, 100 people percent of our customers will not come back. So this is this is a fact now. I think it's it's clear. This means OC Transpo really has to rethink its business model so it can bring back some of those lost riders. That could mean including new, better service, something like a on-demand bus service or the launch of the Trillium extension. The city can also encourage more people to live near major transit corridors. Basically, bring new riders as close to the system as possible. But that takes time. As anyone trying to rent or buy in those areas will tell you, there simply aren't enough places to live. And for the most staunch transit users, they've already been priced out of downtown. So what's the quicker fix? Well, if you don't want to lose riders, how about lowering or even eliminating fares? It certainly will get attention, and cities have tried to do this, largely by relying on COVID relief money, monies that have mostly dried up. Now, there could be a way to target fare reductions. How about riding the Trillium line for free so people can get back into the habit whenever that opens? A lot of those ideas require spending money in order to make it back because less funding leads to less service, leads to fewer people paying fares. We do need support from the provincial and federal levels of government for, uh, for operating funds. Oh, right, the province. I mean, they already provide part of the operating budget for Toronto's transit service, saying that the TTC also provides some regional service. Unfortunately, when Premier Doug Ford came to town to announce the new deal with Ottawa, looks like we're not getting the TDOT treatment. There is hope coming from Parliament Hill. The Liberals have promised permanent funding to run transit, but the latest budget has cities waiting until 2026. Well, there were some things that we were hoping for. We were hoping for more transit funding, maybe accelerating some of the transit funding that's planned for future years. So if you're worried about raising fares because it'll scare off riders, then who pays? Maybe it'll be developers or even you. The city says it's considering raising levies against property owners, even those who never set foot on a bus or a train. In Montreal, there's a $59 vehicle registration tax that goes to fund transit. Gatineau is considering a similar fee that could go up to $90 per vehicle to deal with their cash crunch. Fair or no fair, someone's going to have to pay for transit to get better.